Okay. I'm going to read it again. It says, The Lord Yahweh shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. Verse 37, And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord Yahweh shall lead thee. And that's calling us niggers, blacks, when we are clearly brown people, spicks, wetbacks, tontos, all those things, all those things are proverbs and bywords, man. Saying that we are not the children of the Most High. Hey, everywhere we've been scattered, man. They call so-called black people niggers. You know? <laughs> That's how, this is how you know who the people are, man. That's how you know who the Lord's people are, man. By these curses. And Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. And, and many more. Okay? It says, verse 38, Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field, and shalt gather but little in, for the locusts shall consume it. And the locusts are symbolic to these damn Edomites, man. They stole everything from us, man. It says, Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but thou shalt neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. These damn Edomites and other nations, man. It says, Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coasts, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, for thine olive shall cast its fruit. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity, meaning slavery. All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locusts consume. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord Yahweh thy power, to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. Verse 46, And they shall be upon thee for a sign. See there? These curses are going to be upon us for a sign. That's how you know that we are the Israelites that the Bible talk about. We are the he Hebrew Israelites, man. Not the black Hebrew Israelites because we're not black. And black does not determine the nationality, man. And black is only a color. We are not black. We're all different shades of brown. You know, even until the lightest shade in which look like these Edomites, man. We got Israelites that look like Edomites. That's why you got to judge the spirit by the spirit. You can't judge just basically off of skin color. <clears throat> okay. I'll read it again. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Because thou servest not the Lord Yahweh thy power with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Because the most high. We gave us everything, man. Everything we could have wanted. But we wanted to live like the damn heathens. Or people that he wasn't even dealing with for real, man. It says, because all the heathens had their own gods. But our people wanted to worship the gods of the damn heathens, man. And which are false gods, idols. That's why we're in the situation that we're in now, man. Until Yahweh shall come and redeem us from this. From this captivity. It says, therefore... Shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord Yahweh shall send against thee? See there? The Heavenly Father sent, sent these people against us to come and get us and do what they doing to us, man. And no other nation have done to us what these damn Edomites, these so-called white people have done to us, man. It says, Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord Yahweh shall send against thee in hunger <laughs> and in thirst and in nakedness. And, and want of all things. So whatever we want, we got to go to the so-called white man and get it, man. So-called white man own everything. His face is on the damn money. Even when we when we need money. <laughs> who faces on the damn money? That's who in rulership right now, man. 
the so-called white man is in rulership right now, man. And the Lord called them. The Lord called them our enemies, man. But our people quick to act like we don't have enemies. Hey, may your enemies take you out, man, if you don't believe that we got enemies, man. You better stay circumspect, man, of these damn people. These people hate our guts, man. Verse 50. No, Salakia. Um, verse 49, it says, The Lord Yahweh shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. See there? When these folks came and got us, man, they were speaking their own language. They weren't speaking Hebrew. They had Hebrew interpreters because we spoke Hebrew. They wanted to know what we were saying. So they paid, they paid interpreters that knew how to speak Hebrew, that understood Hebrew, some of our own people. And they and they brought them, they brought them with, they brought them with them to conquer us, man. <laughs> this ain't a game, man. This truth is deadly serious, man. It says, um, <clears throat> so like it. verse 49, I'll read again. It says, the Lord Yahweh shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth. And, and these people love the eagle, man. What's on the back of the old school quarter? A eagle. You know, they got eagles on the back of the money, man. Got eagles every damn well. Hell, uh, the, 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 the national bird. For the United States of America, United Snakes of America, is a damn eagle, man. The national bird is an eagle. <laughs> That's how you know, man. It says, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. They killed men, women, and children, man. They slaughtered us, man. Generations of us, man. Hundreds of years of, of, of killing Israelites, man. But hey, it's recompense for that, man. You got the, you got you're gonna get paid back for that, man. And Yahweh shall gonna make sure of it, man. It says, and he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil. Or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates, until thy high fence, until thy high and fence walls come down, wherein thou trusted it throughout all the land, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates, throughout all thy land, which the Lord Yahweh thy power have given thee. Hell, these devils even ransack Jerusalem, man. Our temple, man, they came into our land and, and, and casted us out, man. Came to our land, slaughtered us, and casted us out. We had to flee, man, back in 70 AD. When the Romans came in and, and, and sacked the temple, man. Verse 53, it says, And thou, and thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons, and of thy daughters. Man, whew. That had to be terrible. That was terrible, man. To have to eat the flesh of your own sons and your daughters, man. Because of starvation, man. Because of fear. It says, which the Lord Yahweh thy power have given thee in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. <laughs> so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil towards his brother and toward the wife of his bosom. And toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children, whom he shall eat. Ooh. Because he hath nothing left him in the siege. And in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground. For delicateness and tenderness. Now you got all women walking around barefooted like a motherfucker, like it ain't nothing, man. When all women back then wouldn't even let the sole of their foot touch the ground, man. Because we're we we are royal people, man. We are clean people. 
It says, so like it said, the tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set her set the sole of her foot upon the ground for the delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her son. So like it. Rain starting to come down now. Got that storm on the coast, man. Trying to get me a lesson in right quick, sitting in this truck. But uh, okay, getting back to it. Uh, let me see where I was. Slacking. Okay, starting at verse fifty-six again. It says, "The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness." Her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom, and toward her son, and toward her daughter, and toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet, and toward her children which she shall bear, for she shall eat them for want of all things, secretly in the siege and straightness, wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee in thy gates. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, Yahweh, thy power. We must fear our power, Yahweh, man. We must fear him, man, because he is not a respecter of person. He put the spirit on our people to eat their own damn children, man. That's why you must fear the heavenly father, man. And this is all because of sin. Want to worship other gods and shit, man. Hey, in these days, they getting ready to come again, man, because it's going to be a great famine in this land. And our people going to be eating their children all over again, man. Ain't nothing new under the sun, man. What happened back then is getting ready to happen again in the time of Jacob's trouble. It says, <clears throat> then the Lord Yahweh will make thy plagues wonderful. And the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou was afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord Yahweh bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord, Yahweh, thy power. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord, Yahweh, rejoice over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord, Yahweh, will rejoice over you to destroy you. See, 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 man, these Christians don't know the heavenly father, man. These Christians do not know the Heavenly Father, man. Let me read that again, man. They say the Heavenly Father is our love, man. That's fucking blasphemy, man. You could be destroyed for blaspheming the, the Holy Spirit, man. That's blasphemy. The Lord is not all love, man. Yes, he has love for his people and none else, man. He don't love the wicked of his people. He loves those that hearken unto his voice and try to do right, man. Those he love, man. Scriptures say, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's what the scriptures say, man. It's blasphemy to say the Heavenly Father is all love. That's a damn lie. When it's telling you right here, man, I'm going to read it again. It says, and it shall come to pass that as the Lord Yahweh rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord Yahweh will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. Nothing. And ye shall be plucked from off the land where the dog goes to possess it. And that's what happened to you so-called damn Indians, man. Y'all got plucked off of this land. And y'all got destroyed all through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, man. These damn devils came and stole y'all land and slaughtered y'all, man. And these are the same fucking devils you going out voting for, man. You niggas, spicks, you spiggles, you niggas. <laughs> hey, y'all are stupid, man. The Heavenly Father call y'all sidish, man. When you look up the word sidish, it means stupid. Verse 64, it says, And the Lord Yahweh shall scatter thee 
among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other and there shalt thou serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone and among these nations shalt thou find no ease that's why it don't make no fucking sense to go out and, 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 and protest and march and all that bullshit when the heavenly father saying among these nations thou shalt find no ease that's a part of the damn curses man that's a part of the curses we under you ain't gonna find no ease man you ain't gonna get no damn equality under these damn devils man that's why we long for your house to come back that's why we ain't voting for these damn devils man we putting these damn devils over us when we come to this knowledge and understanding of these scriptures man Heavenly Father say don't put them damn heathens over you, man. And all people still go out there and fucking vote, man. They still go out there and vote. And then they got the the the, 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 the pride and the audacity to say, hey, you, 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 can't, you can't complain if you don't vote. Hey, man, first of all, you're going to complain anyway. Whether the, whether the motherfucker you voted for lose, if the motherfucker you voted for lose, you're going to complain. Either way it go, man. You still gonna complain we ain't gonna damn complain because we understand we don't supposed to be setting these damn devils over us we ain't gonna complain we longer for our king to come back and put these damn heathens in submission and we ready to get our slaves and we ready to get our kingdom man that's what we ready for man and we ready for these curses to be uplifted off of us man that's why we come back to the to the heavenly father man in these words that's why man Hey, fuck these devils, man. Fuck them. Verse 66, it says, Salaki, let me read 65 again. It says, And among these nations shall thou find no ease, neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest. But the Lord Yahweh shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. When the motherfucking police officer pull you over, man, you shit bricks. That's why you shit bricks, man. Because you scared as fuck. You don't know what that officer might do to you, man. You don't know if it's a racist motherfucker pulling you over, man, or not. And if he ready, if he's seeking the blood of you or your people. You don't know what's going to happen, man. You shit bricks. You know, your heart start beating fast. Your palms get sweaty, man. You get nervous. And you get fearful, man. But the Heavenly Father said, fear nobody but him, man. What's supposed to fear these devils, man? Hey, but these are part of the curses that we under. He confirmed his words that he speak against us, man. These are the words he spake. And they happen, man. They are happening right now because we still under these curses, man. Verse 66 again says, And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even? And at even thou shalt say, Would God it, it, were, it were morning? It's like for the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see verse 6 to 8 and this is the eye opener it says because <laughs> hey this was this here was after the exodus from egypt we walked into egypt the first time but this is this is the this is the another captivity into spiritual egypt this ain't the this ain't the this ain't the ancient egypt this is the this is the spiritual egypt man this is the modern egypt right here it says, and the Lord Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again, because Egypt means bondage. And the Lord Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Did not all people go into slavery, into, into the transatlantic slave trade on ships back in 1619, man? Those slave ships. This is the eye opener, man. This is how you tell who the people are, man. This was the eye opener for me, man, when I came into this truth, man. It says, And the Lord Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Our home, meaning our homeland. Jerusalem. 
It says, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. When we got off that slave ship, what happened to us, man? We got sold to our damn enemies, man. It says, it says, uh, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, meaning our homeland. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men, slave man, and bond women, slave woman. It says, and no man shall buy you. <laughs> and when it says no man shall buy you, that's going in and basically into, into redeeming, man. Because the word redeem means to buy. It says, and no man shall buy you because, hey, Yahweh Shai is the one that's going to come back and redeem his elect, man. You got to be a part of the elect to even be saved from, from, from this hell. This devastation is getting ready to come upon the earth, man. You know, they finna make these vaccines mandatory. You know, they finna make this, this microchip mandatory. And, and that's that's the, the hour of temptation is going to come upon the whole world when that damn microchip Get ma get made mandatory, and you out here starving, man. Ain't got no ways of eating, man. They put that chip in front of you, man. You're gonna be tempted to take the motherfucker, man. If the Lord is not working with you, man. That's why you got to pray to the Lord, man. You got to fast. You got to pray. You got to stay in these scriptures, man. And if it's in you to teach these scriptures, teach these scriptures, man. We got to show our faith by our works, man. Faith without works is dead. And ultimately, you know, after that, after that microchip get made mandatory, then the nukes coming, man. The nuclear missiles during World War Three. Those are the weapons of your Howard's indignation, man. It's gonna burn up this whole land, man. America's gonna be totally destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. That's that lake of fire the scriptures is talking about, man. Because hell is not a literal place, man. Hell is a condition. A hell is a condition that us Israelites are in because. He created us to be above all people on the face of the earth. But where are we? We are at the bottom, man. Because our because of our disobedience and sins. He put us at the bottom, man. So two-thirds going to get slaughtered, put to death on this side. And he's only going to save one-third of the nation of Israel, man. That's 144,000 of the prophets. And then the rest of the, the innumerable multitude of men, women, and children that believe in this doctrine that we bring out, man. You can't be believing in damn Christianity and think you're gonna be saved from this, saved from this coming destruction, man. That's a lie, man. It's all about the doctrine. Okay, so now I want to go into this word redeem right quick. <clears throat> Let's get that. It's like I mean do that. Let's get the word redeem right quick. We'll do it like that. <clears throat> yeah. Got that chariot background on there. That's nice. That's nice. Okay. So let's go into this word redeem right quick. Okay. This is the word redeem. It says compensate for the faults or bad aspects of something. Number one. It says number two. Okay. So let's get uh it says compensate for the faults or bad aspects of something. Down here where it says similar, it says save, rescue, justify. Ooh, that's heavy. Okay. Number two, it says gain or regain possession of. And, and, and who's about to re who's about to gain or regain possession of us Israelites, man? I say that humbly, man, because I hope I'm a part of the elect, man. That the most high is coming back to redeem, man. Okay. It says gain or regain possession of something in exchange for payment. And what was that payment, man? How was y'all shedding his blood for us, man? We were bought with a price. I'm going to get that scripture too, man. We was bought with a price, man. Gain or regain possession of something in exchange for payment. How was y'all died for us, man? He shed his blood, man. His blood was the payment, man. Down here where it says similar, it says retrieve, regain, recover, reclaim, repossess, rescue, buy back. And the scripture said, no man shall buy you because Yahweh shall pay for us, man. 
Yahweh shall pay for us with his blood. It says repurchase. And that was heavy when I saw that buy back, man. That's heavy. That's heavy. Okay. Now let's get this. Like I say, the, let's get that scripture. Let's get that scripture. Um, First Corinthians 6, start at 19. It says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of the Most High? And ye are not your own. You don't own your own body. It says, for ye are bought with the price. Therefore glorify the Most High in your body and in your spirit, which are the Most Highs. See, it says, verse 20, for ye are bought with a price. What price was that, man? Yahweh shall shed his blood for the whole nation of Israel, man. That's why Yahweh shall is going to put two thirds to death. He put two thirds to death right now, man. Because they don't believe in his blood. They wicked as hell, man. He putting their ass to death, man. Because they don't believe in the blood, man. And ultimately, they was the ones that are reincarnated. They had Yahweh shot put to death, man. Back in those days. Them niggas wanted Barabbas instead of Yahweh shot. They wanted Barabbas, man. They said, let his let Yahweh shot blood be upon our head and our children here, man. That's why you niggas gonna get put to death, man. And ultimately, a lot of you niggas gonna stay alive until Yahweh shot come back and he gonna destroy you, man, himself. He gonna destroy you himself, man. Because you had him put to death. Ultimately, all Israelites are going to get the kingdom of heaven. But the two-thirds are gonna are gonna feel it through death by pain, man. Through death by pain. You're gonna have to come back into the kingdom. You gotta be reborn into the kingdom from the loins of the elect that's gonna get saved out of this place, man. Yes, it's gonna be sex in the kingdom, man. Men are gonna have Multiple wives, man. Because the wicked two third got to be brought back, man. The, the, the spirits go back to the heavenly father, man. Ain't no damn place where you go and burn forever, man. That's what Christianity teaches, man. That's why people got to come out of that nonsense, man. Got to come out of that nonsense, man. Okay. So, these are a few scriptures on the Lord being our redeemer. This Job 19, 25 says... For I know that my Redeemer, <laughs> meaning the buyback, my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Yeah, because Yahweh Shai coming back, man. He coming back for vengeance, man. Yahweh Shai is coming back for vengeance on the two-third and to deliver his elect, man. That's the reason Yahweh Shai coming back, man, and to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. Yahweh Shai coming back with the angels, man. In those chariots, those so-called UFOs that people been seeing, man. Those are our big brothers, the angels, man. Ooh. Psalm 78 and 35, it says, And they remembered that the most high was their rock, and the high, and the high power their redeemer. For their redeemer is mighty. He shall plead their cause with thee. Ooh. <laughs> Last one, I'm going to close out with this. Isaiah 41 and 14. Fear not, thy worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. It didn't say everybody. It didn't say the whole, you, the, uh, the whole world. Fear not, thy worm Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel after he wrestled the angel. Fear not, thy worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, said the Lord Yahweh. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, man. No one else, man. I'm getting one more. Isaiah 43 and 14. It says, Thus said the Lord Yahweh, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon and have brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans whose cry is in the ships. Yeah, man. <laughs> So basically, you know, that's the end of the lesson, man. Hopefully it's been edifying through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem El Shah, man. You know, I'm going to give all glory, honor, and praise to Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shah, by Shem Rakakwadash.
I'm gonna give double honors to our apostles and elders with great millstone who teach and rule well, man. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the whole elect. Shalom.